was. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to say in, in fairly recent years, uh, I heard a caller uh, do some of that filler patter and it was swing your partner round and round till the holes in her head make a whistling sound. Not, not a, a phrase for today, but um, anyway, um, what I particularly wanted to relate <clears throat> is that, um, an elementary school teacher allowed his negative image of square dancing to affect his class. And I witnessed this personally. He prevented his class from participating in square dance instruction that I was giving in the school gym. Um, engaged to teach square dancing uh, to the students at that school. I was loading the equipment into the school and upon passing the open doors of his classroom, I overheard him, the teacher, specifically telling his class about the hillbilly hair cartoon, what you've just seen with Bugs Bunny, and how it negatively influenced him. He told the kids that he didn't think they'd enjoy the dance form, so they weren't signed up. Now, meanwhile, other classrooms at the school were down in the gym having a great time learning to square dance with music that I selected to which they could relate. They were dancing to Gummy Bear, Hamster Dance, even Thriller by Michael Jackson. And uh, furthermore, uh, I have some special effects lights. So uh, they were dancing under special effect, effect disco lights at the end of each session. The, the classes kind of, um, they don't have a conveyor belt, but they come through the gym on, on, on a schedule, one class after another, usually the same, uh, grade grouping together. So um, th there's an example, uh, just blew me away that those kids were denied the wonders of, of the social recreation that we have because this, of this teacher being influenced by that cartoon. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. Um, let me find it. There we go. Sorry, all this clicking around the screen here. Um, in another exa example of negativity, and I, I, I'm doing this because we got to understand where this is coming from. Um, in very recent times, a COVID-19 documentary has appeared uh, as a movie. Uh, it's entitled The Totally Un Under Control. It was produced in 2020 and was primarily about the presidency of Donald Trump and his administration's handling of the pandemic. Now, just 49 minutes into the documentary, some reasonably good video of square dancing in the Seattle area of Washington was shown. In fact, the documentary claimed that it was during square dances in that part of the state that the COVID-19 virus initially spread. Um, the video of square dancing featured was only about a 20 second duration. The documentary producers appear to have downloaded the videos from YouTube. This is this is our new situation, everybody. Uh, everybody's a broadcaster now that they've got access to social media, especially YouTube. But unfortunately, they included a segment showing bare chested gay dancers, some in rain gear. It's anticipated that um, particular segment came from a gay square dance convention in Seattle, uh, not during the pandemic period, where the participants, participants were ha having fun on the dance floor. So let me see here if I can, thanks to, um, sorry, thanks to uh, Brent Maudsley, I got, got a copy of it. Um, bum, 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 bum. It was also on Talus on Demand. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, just taking a sec to load in here. So it's it's very brief, but uh, you'll see the. Here we go. Okay, let's so. Uh, And I think I've still got the sound on. You should be able to hear it. 
We're not seeing the video, Brian. Oh, my apologies. Well, my apologies. Okay. She's back. We go. We'll stop it there. Yes, I haven't selected the right screen. Still getting used to this, everybody. Okay, we're um, we're on here. We're going to go to this. Yeah, give it a try. It should be up now. Well, federal agencies failed to talk to each other. The virus swirled in mid-February through a series of square dances in suburban in Seattle. With every dose, the virus changed partners. But without testing, scientists couldn't follow the spread. Okay, that was basically it. And you, you saw the, see, I'm sorry about the, uh, uh, it's not plain stable here, but uh, you saw the uh, little segment there where the uh, gay dancers were doing their thing. Um, okay. I, I don't know, I can't say much more. It's just unfortunate why the producers of that documentary put that little snippet in there because it's sure not typical of the square dance scene. Uh, I, I wanted to say that the Federation um, is doing uh, and has available lots of online promotion material. Um, although Gene and I are working on revamping it, uh, our, the main marketing promotion page is squaredancefund.info. Um, it opens with an index section and uh, attempts to not just educate, but also build awareness and, and promote. Um, why I'm mentioning this in particular is we've got two videos featured there, one being our Dancing Keeps You Young uh, feature. It's 10 minutes long. It's a promotional video. And in that, two couples are um, close friends uh, and they discuss sitting around in the living room the benefits of um, square dancing. And the non-square dancing couple goes with the square dance couple to um, square dance lessons. By the way, the lessons are with uh, Steve Edland instructing. You see Steve in the video. Um, anyway, you follow their learning process. And uh, the other thing of note is all the dancers are in casual attire. So you don't see any of the traditional dress. So that gives this video a little more longevity. I'm not going to play it, but it's at, uh, we've got a referral address to take you directly to it on YouTube. It's dancingkeepsyouyoung.ca. Um, the second video on our marketing and promotional page, that's squaredancefund.info, it tells of the value of dancing as a way to improve brain function and reverse the signs of aging. Um, the visuals are set to the lilting music of a Viennese waltz, and it's really lovely. Um, it's embedded on squaredancefund.info, and I certainly could give you the direct, you can click to go directly to YouTube if you wanna see it there. Um, uh, now, another uh, Square Dance promotional video worth mentioning, and I think Gene, you referred to this earlier, um, uh, is uh, that produced by Marianne, Marianne Turner of Williams Lake. Uh, she and, and husband Nick, Nick's on, on our Zoom session here too. Um, they call and queue in the area and Marianne made two short videos um, available for, for our use. There's also a third uh, there uh, <coughs> that relates uh, what, an, what a square dancer might do, be it canoeing or hiking. Um, but anyway, my preference is the second because the music's lovely. Uh, uh, Marianne called it Square Dance Introduction Number Two. I wonder, uh, <laughs> it's so good, uh, and I'm sure some of you haven't seen it. Let me see if I can bring it up here, get it poised to roll. Actually, um, Brian, yeah. your your when you're playing YouTube or whatever, it's really bouncy. It's not coming through clear because it's not coming through clear on your internet. So okay. if you just give us the link for it, it might be better. Please and thank you. Yeah, I hear you, Gene. I've, I also have closed some windows here that I think might have been drawing on the system a bit too much. Uh, let me see if this will play otherwise, because uh, it's only a minute and eight seconds. Okay, we got to get to um, 
here. We got to get to share screen. Um, okay, that should be up. And I'll roll it, see if it'll play stable. Thank you, Marianne. I, I really love that. And I understand you're going, you, that's available wherever um, the dance community would like to use it to promote. So, um, um, hello? Can I come? Yes, yeah, sure. It played rather bouncily when you played it just now, Brian. It's a lot better when you look at it <laughs> yeah. in person. Gene yeah. asked for. Jean asked for the link before the meeting started. It's in the chat to everyone so they can get to the page where the video is. And it's uh, generic. Wonderful. It's generic. It doesn't mention any club's name. So you all can link to it and put it on your own Facebook postings if you want. Thanks so much, Marianne. You've done a lot of work. I mean, I, I recognize that you've also uh, had to get the video, had to get the pieces there. So that's, uh, I, I recognize the work involved. Uh, anyway, I, I wanted to say that in a desire to turn things around relative, relative to the image, uh, especially square dancing, um, there's certain uh, image topics that we could maybe um, elaborate on early or later rather, but attire on the dance floor is one of them. Uh, promotional photos should depict here in the 21st century casual attire, which is the common attire for new dancers. Um, as was alluded to earlier, Jean, you were saying getting good photos is uh, tough because the dancers are all decked out in uh, traditional dance wear. Uh, by the way, in the Dancing Keeps You Young video, did, I think I mentioned they're not wearing traditional attire. They're all in, in um, casual. Uh, number two, in suggesting attire, uh, I really think that uh, uh, selling dressy cat dressy casual is um, is a good um, image uh, promoter. Uh, I wanted to say though, one time a fellow attended my dance club's lessons uh, wearing a muscle shirt, and it wasn't appropriate. And he was quietly told that a different apparel would be good, but um, just to say casual guys in particular might take that a little too far. So I like dressy casual. Also on identifying square dance music, the term modern music, when we promote, um, it's largely lost its meaning because the word modern is overused. I think today we should use phrases such as a wide variety of music or many genres of music. Um, I think uh, Mike Hogan had some suggestions there. Um, Another thing to bring up is uh, image wise, men in particular have the impression that there are fancy steps in our dance form. Uh, and th thus they have the excuse not to participate by saying they've got two left feet. Now in essence, they're concerned that they will make a mistake and look foolish in front of other dancers. Um, that's the real reason. So in our in our promotions, that could be mentioned and resolved by saying that the instruction is slow and patient with lots of review and everyone, everyone learns, and for that matter, makes mistakes together. 
Um, also in putting our best foot forward, forward with regard to presenting a good image, we have to concentrate on what the dance form is and its benefits rather than on what it was. Uh, also, we should not defame other dance forms. That's a, a, a cheap shot. Um, another effort at the Fed level to improve both image and awareness is our annual acquisition of a proclamation from, from the uh, provincial government. Uh, it's been declaring Square and Round Dance Awareness Week. Now our executives are entertaining a revision to that in order to include the other dance forms that we embrace. It could become just Dance Awareness Week, including and mentioning square round clog and contra dancing. Um, that week, by the way, is usually third week of September. So we're certainly intending to proceed with it again um, in 2021. Um, by the way, during Awareness Week in the fall of 2020, we need, because of the pandemic, we needed something to put forward in celebration. So our BC Federation's Facebook page fe featured a unique post on each of the seven days on some aspect of dance. Uh, you might want to review those because there's a lot of promotional information and in particular, um, several internet links that, that I think are a great value. So that page, our Facebook page is of course, facebook.com forward slash BC Square and A and D, BC Square and Round Dance Federation. So that, that was a fair chunk of posts, as I say, seven individual ones covering that period. Here, here's what's really great. I've come across Mike Hogan on television promoting Square Dance on commercial television in o Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, now we just completed the two Zoom sessions on the subject subject of marketing, featuring Mike. Um, he's a marketing executive, a caller, and a caller lab leader. So in 2017, in February, he spoke to two show hosts on the Morning Blend TV show in the studio at um, KMTV. It's Channel Three in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, by the way, back in 97, the state of Nebraska made square dancing their official state dance. Several states have, have done that. I think it's a valuable exercise, everybody, for us to review that on YouTube. Uh, while Mike uh, tells about today's style of square dancing, we can note the benefits that he identifies. He specifically focuses upon our 21st century style of square dance. And also we can note in the video that the female host, this is interesting, uh, she makes reference to swing your partner round and round and says, you guys, that's not we're, what we're about anymore. Um, uh, Brian, sorry, yeah. I'm gonna interrupt here. Can you post the link to that, um, you two in the chat, please? Um, Cause like I yeah. said, you're, 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 when you're showing it, it's, it's coming through really bouncy. <clears throat> On, on, so my screen, can... it's, on my screen, it's not too bad. Is it really? Well, my... It's really that Mine crummy. isn't bad either. Mine isn't bad either. Yeah, but ours, is, mine is bad. And I mean, I'm direct wired to my modem. So when you're coming through as bouncy on, on, on mine. I'm wondering, so... Jean, if, if I took the um, resolution down, it wouldn't require as much... Um, a memory I, don't, to play. I don't know, but maybe it's easier just to share the links and, and then everyone can have a chance and then we can get to a discussion and... Uh, yeah, uh, it's just that, you know, uh, uh, th this is, uh, we need to see it to be able to follow up on um, Mike's approach and how he dealt with the, the interviewers and how his dancers responded. Uh, uh, Sure. Did you want that now for me to put through on um, chat? Uh, <clears throat> no, I think, I think later, um, if okay. you put all the links through in chat, um, because you, you are coming across very bouncy, at least for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, look at your chat, please. Uh, okay. Did you also post the, um, the Facebook page? contact information too. Yeah, yeah. we'll discuss social yeah. media more next week. Uh, I, 
I mean, I, I certainly I, I had analyzed what Mike did in my own mind um, watching from the video. Um, and I guess the biggest thing he says, it's all about having fun, but he does meant, mention things like cardiovascular um, improvement, um, how, how once you get involved, it's all about the fun. Uh, so uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy that. Um, now, again, I was meaning to touch base on uh, things like um, round dancing, uh, clog and contra. Um, just let me show you here uh, something that um, something that I, I it wasn't clear in my mind, but this is round dancing in the in the um, indigenous community. They uh, have done a round dance for as far back as anybody can remember. And um, it's basically uh, that uh, they established a legend that the round dance tradition would tell the tale of a lady who stayed with her beloved mother all through her life. And when the mom passed away, the daughter was beset with such grief that she was visited by her mom's spirit and, um, and that helped calm her sorrow. Then the mom introduced the the circle dance where everybody and ancestors come together, surround each other with support and love. Um, it, it, that's something I don't think a lot of us uh, are even aware of, but it can be confusing in the minds of those that don't know um, what our, our round dance is. And certainly I think one big um, angle there is we've got to rename it. I think we've got to sell it as choreographed ballroom dancing set to live cues. And um, that much more clearly identifies what that is. I don't have much here uh, uh, having people like Barb on the system. We got to say something about clog dancing. But um, I think one of the problems with uh, uh, trying to sell clogging is the uh, fact that the, the public doesn't know what. Uh, what it's all about. Uh, and I think they think of the, the wooden clogging shoe and um, that uh, what, what really is worn by the cloggers is a, a proper uh, well-fitted shoe with a high back and they wear taps on the, on the toe and the heel. Uh, that's today's clogging. Um, I just wonder here, I'm try trying to zip along here, folks. Um, yeah, and note, again, on the image side of things, notable about, about clogging is you can participate solo, although the camaraderie um, among clog dancers is really remarkable. Um, also, it can be a low impact activity with lots of room, if you wish, to let go with energy. Um, by the way, in BC, we've got uh, clog clubs in the Okanagan Valley, um, the Vancouver Island, where Barb Gannett is, uh, East Kootenays in the Cranbrook area. Um, again, I've got uh, some clogging examples. One of them is a wonderful exhibition clogging piece in a traditional line formation. Um, let me see, I'm just getting closer here, Gene, to wrapping it up. Um, <laughs> Contra, we do have a Contra club in uh, Kelowna. And uh, I was having some fun with this one. Um, just indulge me for a sec because, uh, let me see, come on machine. So, uh, you know, in terms of public perception, Contra could be uh, just knowledge that the Contras were the various US backed and funded right wing rebels <laughs> who were active from 79 to the early 90s. Not really, but, uh, I don't think it's an understood dance form. Um, maybe some think contra is also uh, means a, a pitch below normal bass. Uh, as a prefix, it means against contrary or contrasting. So I think we really, the clog community, and I'd love to work with the Kelowna group, um, they have to um, step up, let the public know what this wonderful dance form is. What's particularly notable about it is that you can get on the dance floor, have a great time, you learn on the spot, and it's got a broad demographic appeal. Um, I, let me see, I think we're pretty much closing it down here. 
Um, yeah, I don't have the graphics ready, but I, uh, I felt that as we get out of the pandemic and start to really push our dance forms, that social element is the real selling point because that's what people have, are starved for. So I was thinking of slogans with appropriate uh, video of people just having a wonderful time. Slogans like reconnect, discover social square dancing. Socially reconnect, discover choreographed ballroom dancing. Socially reconnect, discover clog dancing. And likewise, dis discover contra dancing. So that really everybody is, um, let me find my right icon here. That's pretty much it. Can I open uh, this then, uh, Jane, to uh, uh, supplementary comments or um, criticisms? <laughs> Anybody got something to? Uh... Actually, um, what I would like from everybody, if everybody just could take a turn and make a suggestion on what they can, what they think we need to do to improve our image. So, if everybody would like to take a turn at that. It would help us to work as a group. Um, like Brian's done this this presentation, but what do you want to see? What do you think we need to do? This is what this group is for: is to work together, to put a program together. Now, first thing, it doesn't matter whether it's your web page, whether it's uh, Facebook or any other social media or posters, or or videos. We have to look at our image before we can go anywhere. Um, because if you if you don't agree on an image, then uh, like I mentioned earlier, I asked for pictures for the website that I was doing, that I'm working on for the BC Federation website. And I was sent, I asked specifically for round dance. I couldn't use a single picture because they either had the big skirts or they were old people. I couldn't use a single one of them because that is the image we're trying to avoid. So we we're like I've talked to Marianne about this through email and stuff or and on video that we need a repository on the BC Federation site where you can download um, pictures that you can use in your posters. Marianne does some wonderful posters, you know, and and to download those and 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 be able to. Um, customize them for your club. She's she set that up. I think it's through Google Docs. You've done that, haven't you? Yep. Okay. I <laughs> I did find I did find a plugin that will allow them to color the logo and um, re redesign it with colors or whatever. I did find a program to do it. Um, but I, again, it's a plugin for WordPress and it's gotta be when I get to that page. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's there, but we need the repository so we can share pictures, posters, whatever. So, you know, you need to encourage your, your dancers, and uh, friends of dancers to share this information. Uh, and then okay. older posters. Yeah. They're not they're not social dancing posters that I'd like to change them, but I don't have the pictures that I need to put on the posters. I've used all the ones of the club I can get that are half decent, but I I work at a square dance. I'm a queuer. I'm busy queuing or when I come off the stage, they ask me to fill in the man's part in the square and I just can't run around taking pictures all the time and <laughs> nobody else seems inclined to help me out in that particular area. So it would be just wonderful if we had a bank, a toolbox full of posters where people have, I mean, photos where people have given their permission for us to use it in, in promoting square dancing. It's interesting that you're saying that you don't have any pictures without the uh, perceived way that we, uh, we dress. Well, that's showing that we need to, that image is still there then. The clubs are not changing that image. Um, if the only pictures we're still having are of us in our um, square dance original, outfits and performing out in the public 
again, we're going to have to make sure that we're, we're just wearing the average person's clothing. Uh, I think another thing that I'm finding in Powell River is it's perceived as um, couples. And um, there's a lot of people who said, oh, you know, I'd come, but my husband won't come. Well, how do we get it out that, you know, um, it doesn't matter. You can come and you will become a part of a square. Often I say, I don't even see my husband during the evening because I'm dancing with so many other people in different squares. And that's the fun and the socialness of it. And um, we have women who learn to take the man's part. Um, so I, 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 I do think that's something. And then another thing is they say um, they get frustrated especially like in ballroom dancing that become very popular. And I said, in square dancing, your partner doesn't have to be the lead. Our caller cues everything. It's really the best and simplest way for you to come out and enjoy dancing um, as a couple. One, you don't have to dance with your partner. And two, the man doesn't have to be worried about being the lead because our caller does all the leading. We just have to follow. And so it's the simple calls of just learning. And I do think, um, uh, Brian, that um, uh, Mike was mentioning all the number of calls. We do have to remember that uh, many of our dancers are getting older or from 55 on. Um, it's not like when we're learning when we're young, we can pick up so many other calls. I do think it his idea of making sure we have fun even after five weeks of introduction to dance, that they get to dance in a social atmosphere, not just constantly learning cues. Um, because they become overwhelmed, totally overwhelmed. And I have a husband that became totally overwhelmed. I love to dance, I have no problem with it. Um, but he would say, I've got to sit. And he visually learns, not just with the auditory. And he felt, you see that with many fellows that they get frustrated when they get in the square. So, he constantly had people coming over to him and saying, well, come join our square. He said, no, I just want to sit and watch a minute. Just let me watch and then I will join in. I think we have to realize that people learn differently mm -hmm. and we have to uh, allow them to feel comfortable to sit and visually, you know, participate too. Um, and that's a good way for the learners. Um, but I think couples, how do we get across that, changing that image? Um, I liked your idea, Brian, that it's slow and supportive. There's a lot of repetition. And um, let's see, I'll have to get some of my other points. But uh, <laughs> uh, oh, and that it's easy because you don't have to be the lead. The caller is the lead. So you don't even have to remember, and we will help and guide you around the dance floor. So I, I, I think that's why I've been able to keep my husband coming the last three years. So he's feeling comfortable and he enjoys the people. It's been a great social time and that's what he needed. And he needed to know that Patty wasn't going to be dragging him around the floor, you know, so and I can go over and dance in the square that love to swing harder and etc. you know, um, and he felt comfortable. So those were my thoughts. Okay. Thank you. Um, one, of the things, one of the things that I did have uh, quoted to me and I've experienced it is you see um, posters or um, videos or whatever of something and they're promoting whatever you show up as a new dancer and you go oh i've seen those people and great you walk in the door 
and they're not the people in the poster or the people <laughs> that you saw yeah. in the video. So these are all total, total strangers. There's no connection per se. And I've had people walk out because they take one look at the room and in our case, we are all more or less senior dancers. Um, mm. I like the video that you presented there, uh, Brian, uh, which had the mix of ages, which kind of indicates that we're not just all seniors, that you know there are younger couples or whatever, but most of our clubs are all seniors. And financially, we can't put another class together. We don't have the facility or the finances to put a secondary class. So our, any new dancers are really in with our seniors. And my club is primarily plus dancers, but we're coming down to beginners mainstream just to get them back in to try and build the club. Do you think that maybe we should be starting um, earlier to put lessons in or um, have somebody start another club that's just for, for SSD? Well, there is that option. We have lots of callers that are, are able to do that um, because if we're going to, like you said, if we're going to advertise all these younger dancers, and this is why I talked about regions, if we're going to advertise for these are the younger dancers, these are who dan who's dancing, and they walk into a bunch of seniors, yeah, they're going to get turned off. So you pretty much have to look at an, uh, a way to present like the SSD program. And yes, I'm, I'm a proponent of it because it's very short. It's to the point. The dancers get dancing right away. I was using it last year. And by, by the middle of it, yes, they were dancing. And they were happy with what they were doing, right? And so maybe some of our maybe newer callers can look at they're not getting the mic time. So I encourage if they're not getting the mic time, why don't they start a beginner's club that is nothing nothing but SSD? Mm -hmm. No. So that that's my thought on it. Um, there's a way around it. Like Brent Monsley is going to be teaching the SSD program. Now, not all his dancers are, are old. You know, the same as Brent Mods, um, the Brenzies, right? They've got younger dancers. There's also the teen dance clubs. Um, why I'm, I asked you specifically to put your location on this is because everybody's experiencing different things. Like you say, your club is all seniors. Whereas my club is not all seniors. Mine is all younger people. So we need to look at our image there. Sorry, that's my opinion. Anybody else got a comment? No, I'd like to make a, a, a comment. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about the dancing and this, that, and the other. But what we don't talk about is how do we get them through the door? And one thing that does not get them through the door is the image we present. When we go out in public and do an exhibition, what have we got? Probably rather crappy music, elderly dancers, some square dance costumes, and people just, they just turn off, gone. They're, they're not, not interested. So we've, we've, got to, we've got to do something about that, that, that part of our image too. The other thing too about it, who ever sees anybody square dancing? We do it behind closed doors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, no, nobody sees nobody sees a square dance. Maybe the janitor might, but we, so, so you know, there's a lot of things we need to look at before we start talking about beginners and whatever. Okay, um, That's my okay, Mike Hogan specifically mentioned senior centers and churches. Now, there's so many empty storefronts that there's nobody doing anything in, even in the mall. So I know that I get, I can go to the mall here and I get a free display area. They don't charge me for it. And what I did a few years ago is I put a big TV in there and I ran a looping video. 
that was younger dancers, older dancers, different places, all sorts of it. And, you know, we got 23 new dancers at that open house. Unfortunately, politics, which is another for another discussion, but politics <laughs> chased most of them away. Yeah. But there's all these empty storefronts and there'll be lots of them when COVID's over. And there's yeah. lots of them now. Yeah. You know? I, I, I think our, our future probably does lie in the social square dance program. Yeah. But it's got to be the social square dance program and we've got to keep the old guard out of it because they're going to come in and say, oh, come and learn some plus. It's really fun. Yeah. And we know this happens. They steal dancers because they, they, they're so desperate to get their own club back on its feet. So if, we're, if, you're, if you're doing it, if we're going to talk social square dancing, you need to have that as a separate night and a separate entity from your square dance club. Believe me. I, I think that the social square dance uh, program is a very good idea, but it's it's basically a it's its own stream. It, it's not something that we could easily mix at all with the existing square dance uh, uh, programs. Uh, that's why I say. Yeah, and if you want to do, I mean, that's, I, I don't have a problem with that. If the people want to come out and they want to dance, it's a really good program, but it's not something you can mix. Certainly not at the beginning. It has to be oh. done over several years where you can introduce beyond SSD, you can introduce more mainstream or more plus figures as you go along. But, but, that's, not, but that's not what we're gonna do. We're, we're not going to mix the two together. Social square dancing is a separate world. This is what the this is what square dancers don't understand. Oh, we'll have them for six months and then we'll get them into plus. No, you won't. They're not going to go to plus. No. They're never going to go to plus. They're not even going to mainstream. This is a separate thing to get square dancing back on its feet again. Yeah. Five right. five years down the road, you can talk about getting them into the rest of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I, let's, I, let's I, I agree with you, Nick. That you can't do that if you're going SSD. You can't do it. Uh, you can't mix them right away. You have to wait several years before you can even start introducing some of the other other things uh, in order to kind of head them back into mainstream if if you wanted to, but I'm not saying you you need to. The trouble is when you have somebody that's done gone through the SSD and they say, well, I want to go dance at another club, but they can't. So my you know I have friends that dance with with uh, Surrey Square Wheelers. Sorry, you can't go there because you don't know all of the stuff. And that's a difficult well, thing they have to, to tell them. They have to go to another another social SSD club. Yes. You know? yeah. And you're going to find right. that a lot of our callers are going to the SSD. Um, Marianne, you had a comment. Yeah, SSD is a topic for another. Yes, it is. Month. We could argue about it forever. I yeah. just kind of like to refer back to our image and how we can promote. And I know that when I make a poster and it has the word square dancing on it, even if it says social square dancing, it may or may not drive people to just not look at it. When they see the word square dancing, they don't even bother to look at the poster. So I was toying with this idea. What if instead of square dancing, we say dancing in a square? For example, fun is in the air when you dance in a square or warning, dancing in a square will cause laughter and fun or something. It might suck them into reading <laughs> the poster <laughs> square dancing in great big letters. We could try dancing in a square instead. Yeah, I, I really like that idea. Um, can I ask, I, we haven't heard from the cloggers what they would like to see for their image. Barb? She's, she's kind of sitting there going, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're sitting here chatting. <laughs> um, one of the biggest images that cloggers have, a bad image that cloggers have, a couple of them actually, we're noisy. Um, we have a lot of fun. Um, we damage the floors. No, that one's not true. None of them are. Well, I shouldn't say that. The, the second one, def definitely, we do have fun. Um, we don't damage the floors. The taps are made specifically not to damage floors. And this is why we have such a difficult time finding places to dance because 
we go to a church hall, as soon as they hear the word clogging, oh no, no, can't do that. In Nanaimo here, I cannot get a hall in Nanaimo in which to clog. Um, I teach an hour, an hour away in Mill Bay when we can have classes. And we have converted our garage here into a studio so that I can teach from home. That's the only way I can get a place to dance with taps on. But can you not get insurance? Uh, I know that the, the Canadian Society has third party insurance for facilities. Now, if you can tell them that you have that insurance. Um, in some cases that doesn't even work. So if this is that, that connotation that they have, there's in Nanaimo, it's, it's one person who is in charge of the parks and rec halls. That's, that's the one that I have issues with. And as long as she is there, I will not be able to get a place to dance in Nanaimo. Again. Now, churches are, are extremely expensive as far as rent goes. We don't, like the square dancers, we don't overcharge. I, for my classes, I charge $25 a month. That gives them unlimited dancing all month. I can't afford to pay rent of $60 an hour when I'm only getting 25 a month for dancers. It just doesn't pay. And that's what a lot of them are having trouble with is finding places to dance. And it's all because of that image that we have. I mean, we, we do have a, a good time when we're there. And that's one thing that my neighbors around here have said, you know, what is that that you're doing? Because you're, you're having so much fun, you're laughing. I can hear the, the great music. We don't stick to just um, bluegrass or country music. We dance to anything and everything. Um, at one point, I, I think it's unfortunate because I forgot to hit the record button when we did that other uh, session and did the breakouts. But um, at one point in the history of clogging, clogging and square dancing were one and the same thing. Yeah. In the east, uh, in the east, they actually still are. People will go to a, a square dance and they will dance in a big circle. So it's big circle figures. And then they break out into small circles, which is uh, like big circles can be any number. The small circles are fours. So we do big circle and small circles uh, formations. Dip for the oyster, die for the clam, Kings and Queens Highway, all these different uh, things that we do at our social dances when we have our fun dances at our workshops or conventions. But I think the biggest image is the fact that we damage the force. And we need to find out how to get beyond that. And without being able to get in there, I mean, I can, I can write to the people who make the taps, but they won't send me anything. They won't send me any guarantees that we will not damage the taps because the taps have to be ma maintained as well. If you notice on that picture that Brian had, our tap is a two piece thing. So it's joined by a rivet. And when the taps wear down after dancing for a few years, the rivets start to come out. And then that's when the damage occurs on the floors is because they're scratching the floors. So it's up to the instructors to make sure that their dancers are checking their taps all the time or checking their ta the taps for their dancers and making sure that this is not happening because it's not the tap, it's just the fault of the maintaining of them. Barb, well, can I ask? Different uh, things. It's Brian here. Can I ask uh, about uh, what floor surfaces you want to avoid? I would think that you try to avoid uh, concrete surfaces. Well, anybody finds it hard to dance on concrete. And concrete, especially if it's polished concrete, is very slippery when you've got slippery. metal at the bottom of your shoes. So a hardwood floor is ideal, um, linoleum, tile, um, anything like that. Have you tried any of the martial arts studios? Because sometimes they're more receptive because of the, the, what they do. Sometimes the martial arts are more, susceptible, more uh, agreeable. Uh, you also mentioned about clogging and square dancing mix. If you do a search for clogging, you will get a, a lot of the indigenous and they still clog in, a lot of them clog in squares, especially during competition. Mm -hmm. so. Modern, modern cloggers, well, I, there's that word again, but uh, cloggers nowadays, especially 
um, on the West Coast, on the East Coast, not so much, but on the West Coast, they don't want to touch. I don't want to touch that person. I don't want to hold hands. Okay. So it's hard getting them to do the traditional flogging. They want to just do line dances. Um, and that you, is, that's basically what we do. We, we do line dances. Okay. Were you at the opening ceremonies for the BC Festival? Yes. And that group of cloggers, the indigenous ones from um, mm -hmm. Kamloops, yeah. right? Um, I don't know if that's a way to promote it or because... No, I don't. I, I mean, as great as it was, Jean, it's not what we do. Okay. Well, that's what we need to know. Yeah. It's not the form of clogging that, that we do for sure. Um, we have, it's my job as the cure instructor just like in round dancing and square dancing to tell them what the next move is that they're gonna be doing. So we start with our, our basic steps when they come into beginners. And by the time they leave that first night, they're doing five, six different steps. But then they, it's just repetition. And each step that we do is building on those initial five or six steps that they've learned that first night. But Jean, could I, I mean, Bart, could I ask you a question? What's the difference between clogging and step dancing then? Because back east, the, the basic you hear step. everybody's step dancing. Yeah, I, I have a very good friend who is a, a top notch step dance, Canadian step dance instructor and clogging instructor. And the, the whole basis of step dancing versus clogging is their basic step. It starts off completely different. Oh. And there's a lot more hard hitting of the floor in step dancing than there mm -hmm. is in clogging. Hey, Barb, um, I was wondering if you had any luck looking for uh, private uh, halls. In Surrey, we have most of the halls in Surrey belong to or run by the municipality and they're horrendously expensive. But we've been, we found a couple and the one we want to dance in is a, is a private community hall that is not run by Surrey and, and um, they're quite receptive to us coming in as square dancers, mm -hmm. round dancers. Um, yeah, we, we do have access to one hall where we, we sponsor our group anyway, sponsors an annual workshop every November. And that's at Nanus Bay, which is yeah. about a 30 minute drive from here. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful hog. If you've been there, it's the Nanus Community Center and we have our annual workshop there every year, but there is an instructor who teaches there every week oh. and they have welcomed us. We, we don't have to worry about the floors. Um, I was really nervous the first year we were in there because there were some marks on the floor and everything. So we went out and we, we got the dirt and we got the finger, the, all the rest of it. And we filled in the holes and made it look like it had been there a while. But when I went and gave her the check, I mentioned it to her and she says, Barb, this is a community hall. We expect it. Don't worry about it. I could have kissed her <laughs> because we have been kicked out of so many different places because of damaging the floors. But yeah, um, I did have classes at our community school here in the in the area for a while, but then they closed the school. And that was when we decided to convert the garage to a studio. My classes weren't that big anymore. So this, the garage holds it just fine. But um, we were dancing on the stage of the multi-purpose room in the high school here. When they did the school district and their wi infinite wisdom decided they were going to close the high school convert it to a primary school and it took two years for them to make up their minds oh no it, this isn't going to work so they went back to it being a high school and I haven't bothered contacting them since because we're set up here now and it works fine when my when my numbers get bigger then maybe I'll start looking again but rent is is the big thing I wanted to address that issue of numbers getting bigger if we promote the heck out of our different dance forms uh, to attract post-pandemic interest by the socially starved, it, if we've aligned it, if we're offering them what, what they want and need, which is what Mike Hogan was saying marketing is all about, it could be an absolute groundswell 
of attendance, of interest, um, makes me think that we might not need to worry about cost anymore because there'd be such large participation. Um, but regarding cost, Mike, I think it was bandied about that we should be looking at no less than $10 a dancer a session that we grossly underprice and undervalue what we're doing. Um, also, if, if we can build this great interest um, by offering the socially starved what they want, um, might some of these facilities be acquired that wouldn't normally be through sponsorships? Is there any chance that the Nanaimo Department of Recreation would like to say, come on Nanaimo, the pandemic's over, come have a wonderful time uh, at a learn on the spot clog dance, round dance, square dance, contra dance, what, whatever your dance form is. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out. Uh, it, it means planning. We'd have to get on it like ASAP. What about, what about businesses, uh, corporations, um, mill, mill towns? Might them, I, I'm thinking now maybe of PG, Prince George, isn't a big part of the economy at their local mill. Might they sponsor a huge <laughs> celebratory dance and then you'd have to figure out where to from there especially if the number I mean, we still have to that for us brian is the problem right off the bat because they would probably not hesitate to say yes to square dancing and round dancing but to find a facility that would allow clogging at the same time because it's through parks and rec and it's that one woman <laughs> Maybe the sponsor would pay for a, a board floor to be laid down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> We've tried that. I, uh, okay. Uh, I, I have a couple, a couple of things that I haven't said yet, but there's two things that I noticed. And one is that um, we always tend to, to promote or try and promote or say or promote all of these dances once or twice a year. And my belief is we need to be doing it 24-7, uh, 364. Mm -hmm. every, every, no matter when we have uh, classes, we need to be out and letting people know that square dancing Ooh. is going and round dancing and clogging and contra, uh, it's still going. And the second thing is, as, as Nick has mentioned, people don't know that we're out there. We need to be out in, in things I've I'm often... Doing. I've often, we used to, to deal with a, a promotion group, which we call Diamond Country Dancers. And we used to practice in the, in the uh, driveway of different <laughs> members, which seemed kind of silly. But every time we practiced, we always gathered a group of people wandering by saying, oh yeah, we heard the music. So we come by and see what's going on. And oh yeah, what do you guys do? We always had that. We always had that. Of course, it was nice weather, but but um, yeah. I've often thought about just doing a, a trail around dance in a couple of residential areas where you'd wander around and just just stop in the middle and of the road. <laughs> basically stop in the middle of the cul-de-sac and do a couple dances, and then you kind of wander off. We always seem to think that we have to get something from our from our um, promotion. And I just, it just doesn't, I just don't, I just don't agree with that. I mean, we have to give something. We have to show people. That's the same as what uh, Mike was talking about. The very first level of his, of his uh, pyramid. And it's just show people. You don't, don't require anything from them. Just show them how much fun it is and let them buy into it. And we never seem to do that with, with uh, any of the promotion we're doing. It's like, I sent out a thousand flyers and I didn't get a damn person coming back. Well, yeah, okay. But you look at all the other advertising goes on, especially TV, it's just nuts. And, and they just throw money at it to get half a dozen people to come in and buy a car. I don't know. So um, I really think we need to be able to, to work on getting out in the community and and just showing them where we're around, which maybe isn't be too easy, but Ted, and Nick's got a comment. 
Well, I, what, what are we doing right now to change our image? Like those, those people who come and hear your music and they come and watch and say, what are you doing? What do they do when you say, oh, we're square dancing? I bet they bugger off, don't they? Mm -hmm. actually, we take flyers. Actually, they, they actually, but they stay more for the music than for the dance. They will like watching, but they, they, the music is what draws them in because they, can, they don't know what's going on. So they hear it and then they come back. They'll come and do it. Um, the, other, the, other, the other thing we tend to the other thing we tend to do when we're doing exhibitions is we, we dance full mainstream or full plus, and the people watching haven't got a clue what we're doing. If we'd stick to circles and stars and promenades and swings, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Like how many of you have watched a Hungarian group, uh, Hungarian dancers, a group of that? How many of you said, oh, I want to go and learn that right now? No, you don't. It's far too complicated <laughs> and far too complex. That's what square dancing is. Far too complex, far too complicated. I couldn't do that. I don't want to do that. So how are we going to change this image? Well, we, we used to dance um, uh, at basic. That was, that was one of our, our limitations for what we were using. Is it had to be basic. And you could tell people, OK, 10 weeks, you could, almost, you could be in a position where you could dance most of this. We always have. Um, promotional flyers with us and they're always available if there is somebody sitting out they're handing flyers out to people that are standing around watching ch chatting with or them. if we are able to we will ask would you know we'll take a break a five minute break and all of our dancers would go and take somebody that's watching and say come join me this time We'll do it really, really slow and explain it so you can get a feel of it. And again, back to what you said, Nick, circles to the left, to the right, all to the center, you know, and it's the music that gets everybody hyped up. And then when you're finished doing your little spiel, we'll just say, oh, and here's the brochure. You know, if you're interested in, joining us or learning a little more and that's where i think we were mistaken we shouldn't have had those brochures there it was like okay now you're here here's the brochure you can come and do this we we shouldn't be doing that we should just we were doing we were not doing demos in the driveways we were just practicing for our own demos that we were going to be doing which was well, quite often it was in care facilities and we, you don't get very many people from a care facility that's coming out to your club. So, um, you, but that's what we were practicing for. And as long as we had the music on, it was fine. Marianne? Many, many, many years ago, um, the Fraser Valley used to be able to go out. And we went out, I think, maybe three times over the summer, June, July, August, and September. And we would go to a mall or a shopping center or um, Westminster Quay down in New Westminster on the street. and just out on the street. And we would have an hour and a half, two hour dance. Uh, out in the public, we had people going in the grocery <laughs> stores, in the parks, whatever. And People got to see, they'd stand around and watch. And we'd say, if you, you know, we have classes starting up in September, come join us if this looks like fun, something you might like to experience. We didn't get very many. We didn't get very many, but we're planting seeds. And that why I think is where we're going. You got to plant why, seeds to get people in. I think Marianne why had don't a comment. You, why don't you say we're having dances, not classes? <laughs> People hear, people hear classes and oh, oh I don't want, I don't want, I'm not don't no, back to school. I don't want that. I'll go to a dance though. To to many, the word dance means I need to know how to do it before I can go to it. You don't go to a ballroom dance if you don't know how to ballroom dance. So, I think uh, Nick, that comes from uh, Jim Hensley, does it not? Jim Hensley, uh, uh, who did that. Uh, <laughs> report for color lab he said uh in the modern age um the baby boomers do not go to classes or lessons 
Um, I know the word I started to use after that was sessions. Um, square dance That's sessions. That's what I use, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Mary Ann's been trying to speak here for the last five minutes, so. It's not that important. Uh, we're, we're almost to the point in our club where we can't go out in front of the public anymore. We're too old and yeah. there aren't enough of us to fill yeah. in a square unless we drag some women out to, to dance the man's part. And I, I don't think we should go out in the public if we can't make a good impression. However, one of the ideas we had when we did have a few more people was at Christmas time, we loaded some equipment into a wagon. We had our turntable and records and everything. And we went squareling instead of caroling. <laughs> and we went from down the street of Main Street of Williams Lake along the sidewalks. And we had arranged ahead of time to drop into various stores. And we just arrived at the stores and went in with our wagon and Nick would call and we would sing Christmas songs or rather he would sing Christmas songs with the, a, to a square dance and we would dance for a while and then we would leave and we'd roll down the street and go to the next door. And that was quite a lot of fun for our club. They enjoyed doing it. And, it, and in fact, when we went to the Save on Food, some of the clerks left their till to come and take a turn in the square. <laughs> they got a, somebody substitute for them, but they came in the square and danced. And the manager afterwards thanked us for cheering up the staff because they weren't very jolly that day. It was quite a good idea, I thought. And also we developed um, a friendship with one of the writers on the Williams Lake newspaper. And so we knew pretty much that we could get him to publish our article if we wrote one. So we went around town one day, just jumped in our vehicles and kept going to different places with our rolling wagon. We danced in the stampede grounds. Then we went and danced in the RCMP jail cell. <laughs> and we went, the, we went to the Williams Lake Art Gallery and danced in the middle of the art gallery. We had made arrangements ahead of time. But then he wrote an article about uh, how we had gone around town and done all this. And I think those are pretty good ideas of how to get out in the public in, in non-square dance lesson time just yeah. around town. If we could just get a few more people not quite so old to join us again, it would be lovely. Yeah. Tell my granddaughter to get back in there. I've already told her that. She wants to become a caller. Haven't even seen her. Yeah. <laughs> we, did, uh, we did the Cloverdale I, Parade one year and, and uh, we didn't actually do square dancing. What we what I did was uh, two couple dancing, and I had um, I had all of the club uh, walking down the, the line in walking down the parade in lines of four, and I would simply say bend the line, you know, right and left through, square through three, partner trade, blah blah blah, for probably thirty seconds to a minute, and then have everybody form back up in lines and start walking down. But we always had a lot of real good feeling from the crowd. I would say, you know, we're Surrey Square Wheelers, and this takes to her, and we're still around, and, you know, we've been here for so many years, blah, 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 blah. And then we would continue on. And I had some totally non-typical square dance music that I used, that I would use, and, and I would get everybody moving, but because I would say, what was one of them? Uh, Lion from the Lion King. There was a song from the Lion King. And uh, I would go down and I would say, does that sound like square dance music? And I would get everybody going. I would get them clapping and they would all be going. And then I would say, bend the line. And I would just keep right on going. And all my dancers would start dancing to this music. And then we would keep right on moving. I mean, the, I don't think that we did the parade. I don't think we've done the parade afterwards. But we that year, we, we won the- We that, won the first prize, won first prize <laughs> for after. the group. <laughs> Right, we did. Uh, we did. We did sold in front of the. We did half a sold in front of uh, the, the judges. The judges, and then we kept right on moving. It was really good. Um, uh, okay. Sorry. I, I just wanted to comment. I think we're all on the right track right now. We have to think out of the box. These are all great ideas. We can't expect people to come to us. 
we're going to have to get out there. And now with COVID, we're going to have that perception that how are we going to dance safe? So I was thinking, how could we do it over the summer, um, such as we don't have to dance literally inside or on a floor. Why couldn't we set up in a park and people would know that we were always out there at a certain time um, throughout the summer and people would see us. We didn't call in people, just come and join us, the kids, everybody just be fun where it's not. Um, and then come fall, oh, they go, oh my goodness, that was so much fun over the summer. I saw you guys dancing, I've enjoyed it. Um, my kids have enjoyed it. Make it a family type of thing that they see people out in the parks on a regular basis. We've got iPads that have Bluetooth speakers. You don't have to have a huge sound system. Have your members of the club just out there and you just call and then it could be a social time for your club and then encourage people that they just love to come and join in. And then come the fall or these other times they'll go, oh, we have things starting in the fall. If you'd like to join us, we'd be glad to have you come. Because I remember as a child, I grew up in Calgary and always during the stampede, they have the big street dances, right? Mm -hmm. And it was simple and easy. And that's where I love to go. I couldn't wait for stampede to come because I could go out and dance anywhere around town. You were always felt comfortable and they did easy enough dances. And that was, I'm sure the way um, many of the square dancers you know, we're introduced to it in Calgary, but I just thought summer, it's safe, you're outside and encourage and do some simple dances, but you need to be out and seen on a regular basis. Um, pick a day or during the day or an evening, a nice evening. And if the weather's good, encourage your club members to come out and have some fun. Get outside. I loved Mary's pictures of people dancing on the beach or in the water or the snowshoeing or that was a great thing to do. I love thinking out of the box. So I, I applaud you all. We're, I think we're on the right track now. Nick? But, we, but remember, we, we can't we can't go out in public and do things until the all clear has been given. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes. And it's not going to be given over this summer. We, we're not going to be doing a thing until September. I can almost guarantee that. Oh, yeah. Mm. I can't see us getting back to dancing seriously before January. Oh, um, really? I, that's what I see. Yes, Marianne? In the meantime, I have a wish list for the Federation or people who are volunteering to help the Federation particularly. I, we mentioned I'd like a place on the website for a good a selection of good quality photos that we can all use when we're creating our posters. I'd like and also a, a, an area of editable posters that we can put our own information in. I'd also like if somebody could contribute a list of catchphrases that we could put on our posters. What, what can we say in the lead off of our poster that would promote social square dancing. And if somebody could create some documents that are written to inform um, businesses or organizations in your town that square dancing or ground dancing or whatever are, is a team building activity. Yes. They, often, they often have team building weekends yeah. in businesses, but we need a, a letter or a document that somebody who knows what they're saying would write that would help us introduce ourselves to the, the wellness committee or the team building committee of businesses. I'd also like Family some name. documents worded to use as a basis of a press release during Square Dance Week. So many people have a hard job writing anything during Square Dance Awareness Week. Is is there somebody who you know who is good at that that could publish a letter that we could just tinker with and tailor to our own town? And you know, uh, uh, memes they call them memes. Those short little picture things with a quick little phrase underneath. A collection of short and to the point memes that we could use in 
Square Dance Awareness Week or throughout the year. All of these things, if they were on the web Federation website somewhere, oh my goodness, that would be a wonderful treat. For some reason. Can I just say one more thing? Remember, if you're using photographs and stuff like that, you need to have the people in the photograph give written permission. Permission. 